everyone, welcome back to Pseudotech. Today I'm going to be showing you how to hopefully install Steam on a Raspberry Pi or another similar ARM device. Now I'm running this on the Raspberry Pi 2, but it is compatible with anything else. Pretty much the higher number you have after that Raspberry Pi symbol, the better. So a 3 is going to work hopefully quite a bit better because it's got some more hardware features than just a beefier processor in general. The Raspberry Pi 2 ended up working out for me okay, as we'll talk about in a little bit, but the more you overclock it and the better Pi you have is of course going to be a better experience. Now we're going to be using LTEX um, Exegear Desktop, which as you can see, I'm on the website for them right now. Um, it does cost, which is unfortunate, and it's not very common for Linux applications for like this kind of thing. I was lucky enough to get a free trial from LTEX to create this video, so thank you to them. And also in general, that has been a really great experience, I should say. Um, they're not paying me to say anything good about them, but in general, they had very good support. Anyway, as you can see, it's compatible with a whole bunch of devices and a whole bunch of applications. Basically, what it aims to do is emulate an x86, so kind of a standard desktop processor um, type of application, onto a Raspberry Pi or a similar ARM device. Now, you might notice that Steam isn't on here, but it is compatible with some of the newer versions. I recorded the actual footage of this video and tried it out quite a bit ago, about a month ago, but I had some other videos to do in the meantime, so I haven't recorded the audio or finished editing it. So I was using a beta build that they gave to me that does support the um, graphics capabilities that are required by Steam. Now it is just available if you were to download it right now and you'd get that update, including some other ones that should improve performance. And as you can see, there's also some devices that are listed here, uh, putting on you know, Raspberry Pi, Banana Pi, even Jetson and stuff like that. Those will should all work for this as well, but I'll take you through the process on a Raspberry Pi 2. Now it does cost, uh, which is unfortunate but understandable since this is a fairly complex application. And honestly, I'll just say right now that if you don't need it for something else, I wouldn't buy it just for running Steam because my experience was pretty bad and unless you have a better device that you could run it on, um, like a Raspberry Pi 2, that is, didn't work out too well. I was able to log in, you know, it showed games and stuff like that. The store doesn't work because of some hardware capabilities, and in general it's very slow and laggy on the Pi, which I wasn't expecting since Steam is a fairly lightweight application, just, you know, the GUI, not including the games that you play on it. Um, but it didn't work too well on my testing, but you're welcome to go ahead and try it out for yourself. So it's depends on which, pot, which computer you're buying it for. The Raspberry Pi 3 is $32, but the 0 and the 1 are only $16. Um, let's see, but Banana Pi, similar pricing. Um, Jetson gets a bit more expensive. Yeah, so in general, you're looking at about $20 to $50 kind of range, depending on which device you're buying it for. Anyway, let's get right into the rest of this video to show you guys how to do it in case you do want to set up your own device. If you haven't followed my previous tutorial about how to set up the RetroPie, then you should go ahead and follow that. I'll have a link down in the description or somewhere around here to figure that out. I'm going off of that pretty much from where I left off in that video into this video since it's kind of did it as one whole project that's built into two videos. You're going to want to go ahead and install the Pixel Desktop, which is just the default Raspberry Pi desktop that isn't installed by default since it's on the Retro Pi kind of desktop, which has you know your emulators and your games. It's easy to use from a TV, but you don't have much access beyond like a terminal. If you go ahead and buy actually your desktop, you'll end up with two files. One is a tar file of the installer, and the other is the key, both of which you're going to need for the installation. So go ahead and put them in the same directory. I'd recommend not doing your home directory. Create a subdirectory for them. And to install it, you just want to unpack it. So unpack it using tar and then a whole bunch of flags, which are xvzpf, and of course just exegear desktop, the tar.gz file. Once that's unpacked, you can do dot slash install dash exegear.sh, and that's going to run the installer. It could take a while. It took about 20 minutes to a half hour for me, but obviously it's going to vary depending on your computer. It does say in the notes that they gave me that you might need to install with dot slash the installer file, and then followed by ubuntu dash 14.04, which will install a different kind of base system that it's emulating. For me, the Debian image that it was running on that installed by default worked just fine, but for things like Spotify, you might need to install the Ubuntu version. Once you're done with that, go ahead and just run the exegear command. It should be all set up, and you should be in the exegear environment. It'll look just like a regular terminal, but you're actually in a different kind of 
operating system, I guess, but it's built on top of the existing operating system. It's not quite a full virtual machine because it allows access to the files and things like that, but it like emulates certain types of processes, I guess, that turns it into the x86 application into something that the ARM processor can read. I have no idea how that works, but it seems to work, so that's all that really matters. To install Steam, I followed the instructions from the Debian wiki, which are fairly good and seem to work for me. You can find the exact instructions and commands at wiki.debian.org steam. I went ahead and skipped the graphics section since it should already have the graphics installed because it's a Raspberry Pi and it's not like a special Nvidia or AMD card. If for some reason you have issues, you might want to revisit this depending on the system that you're running. The process is fairly simple, although you'll have slightly different commands for 64-bit and 32-bit systems. Keep in mind that even though this isn't x86, the Raspberry Pi does have a 64-bit and a 32-bit variant, depending on which model you have, so just follow those according. This wiki article also has a whole bunch of troubleshooting tips, so if you're having issues, make sure to go find those. Basically, we're going to add a non-free component to the sources.list file. So just run the command that they provide, which is just deb and then adding the non-free repository. After that, we just need to do apt-get update and then optimally apt-get install steam. For me, I held a whole bunch of dependencies missing, probably because I'm on this kind of new partial environment. I'm not sure how that works and how the packages carry over, but I was missing a lot of dependencies. So you can run apt-get f install to install the missing ones and then try installing steam again. Once it's installed, just go ahead and run the command steam and it should open up. For me, this worked with absolutely no problems, which was fantastic to see and I was able to log in with my pseudotech credentials. Once you're in, the store won't work because of hardware limitations, but you do have access to your games and things like that. Honestly, it's really not a usable interface, but it was kind of fun to try out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found something useful in this video, then definitely make sure to leave a comment below or any suggestions you have about how to actually get this working in a little bit better state so that you could stream onto a Raspberry Pi, which I think would be super cool. Either way, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.